My guest this hour is internationally acclaimed change agent and renowned simplifier, Mr. Bill Jensen. Work smarter, not harder is a phrase many of us have heard throughout our careers. But what does it mean to work smart? And as work has become more dynamic, disruptive, and downright overwhelming, the question I think really becomes, how do we need to work smarter in order to thrive in the future? Today, Bill will answer these questions and show you a roadmap you and your team can follow to create your best future. Pretty important stuff and part of our commitment here at Execunet to share trusted advice that can transform your career, how you work and lead, and the way you live. And the main thing you need to be talking about with your friends is, am I disrupting myself as fast or faster than the marketplace? That is the one driver of your success from now until you're six feet under. This is the primary driver, and you're the one that has to take ownership of it. You can ask for coaches. You can ask for mentors. You can use online um, learning. You can do a whole bunch of things to do it, but you are the one that decides the pace at which you're going to disrupt yourself. And most people are have their fingers in their ears. No, 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 I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. But the reality is we need to do that. So I want to help you do that in the few minutes we have remaining. The first thing I want you to think about is just in the same way that you have a financial portfolio for your retirement, and most of us, you know, the average person, there are risk takers, there are totally safe people, but the average person out there has a financial portfolio that's a mix. There are some risky investments that are high, high risk, high yield. There are some treasury bond things that are lower yield and lower risk, you know, and then there's a mix in the middle. I want you to start thinking of the projects that you do throughout the year as a project portfolio when it comes to disruption and risk. Out of, for the average, everybody's different, but what I found for the average person, about every five projects, one of them should take you totally, totally outside your comfort zone, should be a promise that you have no frickin' idea how you're going to complete that. A goal that is so big, so stretched, but you commit to it. And you fly with, quote unquote, without a net. Now, you'll notice that the portfolio is not all of that. It's just one. So I'm not saying setting you up for failure. I'm not saying take big risks with your career. But I am saying at least one out of every five of your products has to drive you completely, completely out of your comfort zone. If you don't feel like you're sweating bullets and taking a risk and up on a high wire and worried about whether you're going to fall, well, then you're still not disrupting yourself far enough. So that's the workload itself. Disrupt yourself through your workload. Seek out at least one out of every five projects that completely, completely make you uncomfortable and do that continuously. And after a while, you'll be able to do two out of five, three out of five. You'll be able to do that a lot more often. But this is one way to get ahead of the marketplace disruptions is seek out projects that disrupt you. The other, I want to help you with a new assessment tool learn from a new assessment tool that I developed through that last book. I've developed a tool which asks people, are they future strong? There are three categories. You're either strong, meaning you're ready for a very, very disruptive future. You are passive, meaning you're like most people. You're playing catch up with this disruptive future. You're really never getting ahead. You're never really screwed, but you're never really getting ahead. And the last shackled is your screwed. <laughs> you really, you are, your, your technology, your, your job, something is going to be plowed over. Uh, you know, if you're in a taxi cab, Uber is about to sideswipe you and take over your whole industry. So, you know, that's future shackled. And what I want you to know, there are, there are, whether you use the Jensen tool or not, future strong assessment tool, there are five categories I want you to start thinking about. One, if you're going to be future ready, future strong, ready for anything, one is self-awareness. 
Again, that's the opposite of this, the, uh, the slide earlier with the fingers in the ear. You really, really know yourself deeply. The second is passion and drive. And this is not just, am I passionate? Do I really care? If I, you know, if I work for a bank, do I love my bank? Do I love the community? Do I love the serving? If I work for Apple, am I, do I love my next iPhone and creating the next iPhone? It's not just that. It is that, but it's also something else. We're heading in the gig economy. All of us, whether we like it or not, in our future are going to be permanent freelancers. Very few of us will have jobs for more than a year or two or three at max. So passion and drive also relates to your ability to translate your passion and drive to different cultures, to adapt your drive to work within a culture of a bank or a technology firm or, or a hospital, you know, continuously. So know your passion and know your drive well enough to be able to adapt it to different environments. Trust uh, and risk relates to something Brene Brown has made famous and be the willingness to be vulnerable. You are only going to get farther in the future and you're only going to be future strong if you yourself are willing to be vulnerable. And a, a simple example of that was how I started today. Uh, you know, I had a, sl a slide that had the number five on it that had to be changed. And I had to be willing to look bad in front of hundreds of people that were attending this and say, oops, you know, after I evaluated, I made it three. Um, I had to be willing to be vulnerable. And that's trust and risk. Sacrifice and grit. The, this goes back to the question, Tony, that you facilitated through many of the people that asked. Most of the sacrifices that we are being asked to make benefit the company or the boss of the company, but not us. You need to get skilled at determining which hardships, which sacrifices are not only for the boss, the company, the customer, but good for us that will help our career. Taking on sacrifices that benefit others, but not us, is not future strong. So you need to know which sacrifices truly matter and which won't. And the final is agile teamwork. That, that's above and beyond what most of you are already thinking right now. The model that I took was not corporate teamwork. It was the Navy SEALs that I've worked with that, you know, they literally have each other's lives in their hands. Agile teamwork is, is, is if Tony and Kim and I are on a, on a team and I know that team, Tony wants you know, to, to leave ExecuNet in a few years from now. I'm making this up, by the way. You don't. Uh, but if I know he wants to leave you know, a few years from now and he wants to be fishing on a lake three years from now, it's not just do I have a, a great, are we great teammates and am I helping him on webinars. It's I pull him aside on a coffee break sometime and say, Tony, I see you're working too hard for ExecuNet. Are you achieving your personal goals? So agile teamwork is about personal goals. Are we covering our teammates' backs when it comes to where they want to live and how they want to be? So that is the future strong tool.